Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chen Peng Wang from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And today I'm, uh, I'm the representative of our research group to present this work because uh, Qin Kai Shi uh, has some uh, visa issue and cannot come to the uh, New Zealand to present this work. And actually, uh, I prepared to present this work in person, uh, but I got COVID yesterday. So uh, unfortunately, I have to present this work online. Okay, so uh, now I will uh, discuss this work. And uh, uh, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, put, uh, you can uh, send it in the chat box or propose after uh, in the QA section. And uh, uh, in this work, we uh, focus on a very class, a classical uh, model called uh, uh, DAX variability because DAX is very uh, famous in the program analysis. It's very classic uh, reachability uh, problem and it describes a group of strings with perfectly matched parentheses. And uh, if we have a, a directed graph where each edge is labeled with the parentheses, or some uh, epsilon that represents an empty string, we can uh, define a reachability relation in this graph. Uh, specifically, if a uh, vertex is the axis are reachable from another, if there is a path, and uh, uh, this path can induce a string, uh, which is a dark word. So in other words, the label string of this path contains perfectly matched parentheses. So for example, the vertex E is stack CFL uh, reachable from the vertex D because uh, this label string contains exactly a pair of matched parentheses. And similarly, uh, the vertex F is also stack CFL from the vertex D because the label string contains two, pa uh, two pairs of matched parentheses. And many works uh, use uh, this grammar to formulate the content sensitivity, content sensitive analysis, because uh, this uh, matched parentheses can exactly represent the correspond uh, corresponding uh, function calls and returns, just like the left parentheses and the corresponding right ones. And uh, uh, typical works include Chattaji's work that uh, utilizing the linear preprocessing time and space to uh, support the constant query time. And the least work also uh, use this grammar to formulate the context and field sensitivity. And we appreciate these works because these works have greatly pushed forward the study of CFL reachability. But this grammar alone is not sufficient for the context sensitive analysis because it's strictly restrict that every processes must have the corresponding uh, matched one. In the context of program analysis, that is to say, it misses many partially matched function calls and returns, but these function calls and returns are still valid. Let's come to see this example. Uh, this graph represents actually the value flow of this uh, motivating example program. And every vertex represents a value in this program, and the edge represents the assignment or the data dependence. And we can notice that there are some uh, edge labels. So as we mentioned in the previous slides, this label uh, records the uh, program locations of each function calls and returns. And let's uh, consider the uh, line seven, a variable E receives the return value C. And so we have an edge from the vertex C to vertex E. And since C, such assignment happens as line seven, and also it represents a function return. So we use a right parenthesis with a substrate seven as a label of this edge. So obviously such value flow from C to E is valid. But if we use the diagramma defined in this way to formulate such reachability, the, uh, this label string from C to E only contains the unmatched per right parentheses, so it is not well matched. So this means that the vertex E is not reachable from the vertex C, 
with, with respect to such grammar. So we can observe that this diagram misses such partially matched function returns. And similarly, as the line eight, the variable e passes its value to the parameter uh, foo, which is a function. And uh, similarly, we can have the edge from the vertex e to vertex uh, to the vertex a, and this edge is also la labeled with the uh, uh, left parenthesis with uh, subscript uh, eight. So this can shows a uh, function call. And obviously such flow is also valid because it shows a uh, function call. But if we use this diagram, it's also determined to be not reachable, uh, determined that uh, e is not, uh, a is not reachable, that's if are reachable from e. So similarly, the path from C to A, uh, to E and A is also valid. It just represents that A returned as uh, line seven is assigned to a function parameter as line eight. Again, if we use this grammar, it will be determined that A is not reachable from C. So for the context sensitive analysis, we need to extend such context sensitive, uh, to extend such DAX CFL to allow such partially matched the parentheses. So extended DAX CFL allows a string as long as it does not contain the mismatched parentheses, no matter where exists any unmatched parentheses. So typical examples include this string. Uh, it contains a sequence of the right parentheses without match the left ones. However, uh, since it does not contain any mismatched parentheses, it is valid with respect to our extended DAX CFL uh, DAX grammar. So in terms of the content sensitive analysis, it just means a sequence of the, of the function returns. And we call it as p pass because this string can be derived from the second production rule in this grammar. And uh, similarly, uh, this string is also uh, belong to this the language induced by this grammar because actually it uh, does not contain any mismatched parentheses. And in the uh, terms of the context sensitive analysis, it just represents a sequence of, of function calls. And also this string is derived from the, uh, by the third production rule in this grammar. So we can call it as uh, M pass. And furthermore, we can concat these two strings as a whole. And uh, this, the third string also belong to this grammar uh, because it can be derived from the, uh, actually the last production rule. So we call it as the PM pass because it's just the concatenation of the P pass and the N pass. And uh, uh, we notice that it's very hard to use the existing algorithm to determine the uh, extended DAX CFL reachability problem if we define the grammar in this way. <clears throat> in practice, to address the extended DAX CFL reachability problem, uh, one can use a subcubic algorithm to compute the transitive closure. Uh, this allows us to answer each reachability query in constant time. And the other is the REPS temptation based algorithm, which basically traverses the graph to answer every reachability query, but we need to utilize some optimization techniques such as the summary edge computation. Uh, so uh, actually these two lines of techniques lies, uh, lies on two extreme points. On the one hand, the temptation based approach needs to traverse the graph for each reachability query. So uh, it requires a very uh, large time consumption for each query. And on the other extreme, the transitive tra closure based approach allows a constant query time, but it demands a very uh, expensive pre-processing uh, phase. So it is not affordable for a large graph. So there is a very natural question that is, is it, is it possible to find a promising trade-off between these two extremes. 
so that it only needs to uh, almost a linear time in the space for pre-processing, but still allows for almost the constant query time. So in this paper, we try to answer this question by proposing a new approach for this extended DAXFL reachability problem. And basically our approach consists of two steps. In the first step, <coughs> we propose a chief transformation from the extended DAXFL reachability problem to a traditional uh, or conventional uh, reachability. And after such transformation, we can leverage the reachability density schemes uh, in the DB community to speed up the conventional reachability query so that we can also <coughs> answer the extended DAXFL reachability query efficiently. Okay, now I will present more technical details about these two stages. <coughs> okay, in the first stage, we need to transform the extended DAXFL reachability to the conventional reachability. So to achieve such transformation, the first step is to compute the summary edge. Actually, a summary edge connects the uh, input and output as a call side. So it is proposed to avoid visiting a function body redundantly. So uh, let's consider this example again. In this graph, we can <clears throat> add a summary edge connecting the vertex D and the vertex E together. So when we traverse this graph, for example, from the vertex G, we do not need to go into the uh, the graph corresponding to the to the uh, function to the function uh, bar uh, again because we actually summarize the semantics uh, based on this summary edge. So in this way, we can avoid traverse this part of graph. So we can just jump from the vertex D to vertex E directly. And it should be noticed that the computation of the uh, such summer edge does not introduce heavy overhead because it has been proved that the complexity of computing such edges is almost linear because uh, a repre here, A represents the maximum number of function parameters and returns. So in practice, this uh, variable is almost uh, constant. So the complexity uh, can be regarded as uh, Close to almost linear. And after building such uh, summary edges, we only need to copy the original graph twice to, uh, uh, to finish such transformation. Specifically, uh, if we have such summary edge, we can first construct the first copy of the graph in this way. And specifically, we remove all the edges labeled by the left parentheses. So as you can see, we remove some edges from this graph and get this copy of copied graph. So this copied graph contains all the reachability relation with unmatched right parentheses, that is the P paths. For example, we notice that there is a valid path from the vertex A to the vertex E in the original graph. So this is uh, it represents a uh, extended DAXFL reachable paths. And also we can notice that there is a corresponding path from A1 to E1 in our first copy of the graph. And uh, similarly, we can get the second copy of the graph by removing all the edges labeled by the right parentheses. So in this way, we also get all the reachability relation with unmatched the left parentheses, that is the uh, M paths. For example, we notice that there is a path connecting the vertex E and the vertex F in the original graph. And we also notice that E2 can also reach to F2 in our second copy of the graph. So in this way, we can preserve such reachability relation. And finally, we connect these two copies of graph by adding the edges from the vertices in the first copy to the corresponding vertices in the second copy. So in this way, we can preserve all the reachability relation uh, induced by the concatenation of P pass and N pass, which means the PN pass. For example, in the original graph, we notice that 
A can reach F, can reach uh, the vertex F with respect to our extended gamma. And similarly, we notice that there is a, a, the, a reachable path uh, starting from the vertex A1 and ending at the vertex F2. So in this way, our uh, we can uh, we have constructed a directly graph uh, preserving such reachability relation. So finally, if we want to uh, answer the query on the extended uh, dax FL reachability, uh, which just uh, reduce it to the uh, corresponding uh, conventional reachability, that is, if we want to answer whether A can reach B uh, with respect to our extended dax FL, we can just examine whether A1 can reach uh, B2 uh, um, uh, with respect to the conventional reachability relation. So such reduction is, uh, is an equivalent, which means that these two uh, uh, reachability relations are actually equivalent. We can prove, uh, we can prove them uh, theoretically. So for more details about such proof, you can refer to our paper. And after the first step, we have Finish the transformation. So the second step, we need to uh, to accelerate the uh, accelerate uh, answering the query about the conventional reachability. And this part is much more easy than the uh, extended DAXFL because for the conventional reachability, there are many existing efforts in the uh, EB community, such as the reachability indexing schemes. So we can utilize them to accelerate answering uh, the conventional reachability. And typically, uh, the indexing schemes include the GRAIL, uh, pass tree, do labeling, and so on. And uh, let's use the GRAIL as an example. Uh, actually, GRAIL label each vertices with multiple intervals. And these intervals are computed by multiple post-order uh, graph transversal over this uh, directed graph, so it can uh, be obtained in you know, a very low overhead. So we omitted such details because this part is not the technical contribution of this work. And use these uh, intervals, we can easily reject the reachability relation in constant time. That is to say, if a vertex is, is not reachable from another, we can respond to this query in almost constant time. So, uh, although we cannot uh, use uh, in, um, the interval to <coughs> determine the vertices that be reachable from another, such an interval has still significant to reduce the search space. Let's come to see some example. <coughs> to check if the vertex H is uh, reachable from the vertex B, we can just check the interval uh, the interval of H is a subset of the interval of B. And according to such information, we notice that such a uh, property does not hold. So we know that H is not reachable from the vertex B. So such uh, reachable relation can be determined in the constant time. And for general cases, if we want to determine whether the vertex H is reachable from A, we can still benefit from such interval information because we can traverse from the A, for example, uh, reach B in the first case. And we notice that B cannot reach H according to this interval information. So we do not need to explore the path starting from B. So in this way, we can significantly prone the search space upon this graph. And for the second case, if we reach C, we can notice that uh, C can, uh, we cannot reject the uh, reachability from C to H. So we can continue the path exploration and finally reach H at the end. So in this way, we can, uh, as you can see, we can utilize such interval information to prone the unreachable path and also benefit the answering of the reachable cases. So as a summary, GRAIL can answer the negative reachability query in constant time by checking the intervals. And or
also speed up the positive reachability queries by pruning the unnecessary search space. So uh, notably, it uh, Grail can also return the complete paths between the two vertices uh, as evidence of the reachability relation. So this is very important for some program analysis clients, such as the information flow analysis. So in this case, we can track how such information leak occur in this program. We need to know the complete program paths. So the typical example is the information flow analysis. And uh, another indexing scheme is named uh, the path tree. And compared uh, to the grill, uh, the path tree is more efficient uh, respond to is respond to the positive reachability query, but it may consume more resources to compute the re, uh, reachable reachability index. But it's still much cheaper than computing the transitive closure. And uh, unlike the the grail, path tree do not provide the whole path if see uh, these two vertices are reachable from each other. It just gives a yes or no answer. But such uh, information is still very uh, 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 important for some static analysis client, for example, the alias analysis, because in this case, we do not need to care about why these two pointers are alias with each other. We only need to know whether they are aliased. So to sum up, we only need almost a linear preprocessing time to build the summary edge and copy the graph twice and compute some cheap information like the uh, interval information. So we can answer each extended DAX reachability query in almost a constant time. And in this paper, we provide two applications of our approach. One is the IFDS-based content sensitive information flow analysis. So in this client, we utilize the uh, indexing scheme uh, Grail to speed up the reachability query. And the second application is a value flow-based content sensitive alias analysis. And in this part, we use the path tree. And basically our approach works in two steps. The first step is to build the indexing graph, which transforms the extended DAX FL reachability to the conversion of reachability. So this is just the first step uh, we shown in the previous slides. And after this stage, uh, we can uh, just uh, utilize the index schemes to uh, accelerate the uh, querying of such reachability. And it was mentioning that the first step is only needed to produce uh, conducted one time because such indexing graph uh, can be reused as long as the program, uh, the, the original uh, representation, graph representation does not change for the given program. And in our evaluation, uh, the graphs are built using the state of art static analysis tool. And a graph may contain millions of the vertices and the edges, as you can see here. And uh, such graph size make it impossible to compute the transitive closure because computing a transitive closure at least need a quadratic time and space. So it is, not uh, it is not affordable. And for such large graph, our indexing screen, uh, graph, uh, our indexing approach becomes promising because it allows efficient query without computing the expensive transitive closure. <clears throat> but some cheap information, just like the interval we showed before. Okay, now I use, uh, let me use the information flow analysis as an example. Uh, as you can see, these two figures compare the time and the memory cost of computing the transitive closure and uh, the reachability index. And the yellow line shows the cost of computing the transitive closure, while the blue lines shows the cost of computing the reachability indexes. So this shows that our approach can be much better than the transitive closure based approach because we can finish and analyze, analyze analyzing all the uh, this uh, experimental subjects in the given time budget. And in detail, uh, this page shows that over 
the time and the memory cost of trans transforming the extended DAX CFA eligibility to the conventional one. So as you can see, the time and the, the memory consumption is almost linear. So it can show the uh, very uh, elegant scalability of our approach. And for the larger graph, which contains about 20 million vertices, we only need about five minutes and less than one gigabyte of peak memory to compute the reachability indexes. And after the pre-processing, we compare the reachability query efficiency. And in theory, our approach should stand between these two extremes. The transitive closure should be the fast, but uh, actually we cannot perform the, um, the complete experiment about uh, the, the, the transitive closure because um, uh, it can, we cannot get the uh, experimental results for this approach in some large programs. And compared to the, the demand driven approach, our approach exhibits a speed up about 100 and, uh, uh, and about 100,000 times speed up. So since our approach has formed the extended DAXF eligibility to the conventional one, uh, so uh, it is a successful um, uh, trial at reducing the classical program language problem to the conventional database problem. So it connects the PR community with the DB community. And that is after uh, the tra transforming the extended deck safe eligibility to conventional one, we can reuse some other uh, DB community to optimize the program analysis techniques such as the dynamic indexing, the graph simplification, and the query caching mechanisms. So we believe there are countless other techniques from the database we can leverage to optimize the program analysis. So as a conclusion, we propose the approach to transforming the extended DAC CF eligibility problem to conventional graph reachability, which allows a significant six speed up of the reachability queries in the context sensitive program analysis. And it shows the possibility to use the indexing scheme to speed up the general CF eligibility query and since the safe eligibility bears very high uh, complexity burial, uh, it is very hard to reduce the complexity, but we believe it could be promising to address the safe eligibility problem by providing the proper indexing scheme. So maybe in practice, we can get better, uh, uh, better performance. Okay, that's all for our work. If you have any questions, please feel free to propose uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, questions? In the room or online? Hello, uh, thanks for the nice talk. Um, just a very general question, because I'm not very familiar with um, your domain, but wh what do you do exactly about uh, indirect function calls, such as function pointers or virtual functions? Um, how do you deal with them in the, in the code bases that you, that you looked at? Oh, it, it's very good question. Uh, actually, uh, it, is, it is a very important question in the pointer analysis, especially mm -hmm. for uh, for currently the, the C, C++ in Java uh, static analysis. For function pointer, actually, we need other approach to, uh, to handle such language feature because um, apart from the function pointer, there are also other kinds of language features. For example, the Java, reflection can also affect the core graphs. But in our approach, we will assume that we have such graph uh, as the input of our algorithm. So <clears throat> actually for the function pointer, we may utilize such as the Stingard or Anderson pointer analysis to get the, uh, mm. the result of points to set of the function, uh, function pointer. And then we can construct the control flow graph to get a color quality relationship. And finally, after we have such graph, 
we uh, will invoke our indexing algorithm to speed up the reasoning of the, the such uh, standard dexter eligibility problem. So for the function pointer, maybe uh, it is possible to utilize uh, our approach to answer some alias information for the function pointer, because we also evaluate such clients in our evaluation. But actually, I think this is an important question, but it's not a major concern of our work. Okay, I see, thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. All right, so we're out of time. Let's thank Cheng Peng again.